Welcome back to Football Daily, where today we've constructed a team of Champions League quality players who unfortunately aren't featuring in this season's competition. Let's get started. Goalkeeper, David De Gea. Our pick in goal is a no-brainer. David De Gea may have endured one of his toughest campaigns in 2018-19, but he remains among the world's elite keepers. Last term, he conceded 54 goals, nearly double the tally he let in during his magnificent 17-18 season, and made just 2.3 saves for every goal he let in, a figure that stood at 4.1 for the previous campaign. He also made a total of four errors leading to goals, and this huge drop-off in form, especially towards the end of the season, was a contributing factor in Man United finishing sixth in the Premier League, five points of Champions League qualification. Instead of relishing ties against the likes of PSG and Barcelona, as he did earlier this year, De Gea will have to settle for facing AZ Alkma and Partizan Belgrade. The 28-year-old has recently signed a new contract at Old Trafford, and so far in 1920 has already kept two clean sheets at home in the league, equaling his total tally for the previous season. If De Gea and his backline keep up current form, they could be back in Europe's elite competition sooner than expected. Defender Yusuf Attal Tip for a move to the Premier League in the summer, Nice's use of Atal has been a revelation in France since his move from the Belgian Pro League in 2018. The Algerian right-back cost the South Coast club just €3 million Euros at the time, but is now being valued as highly as £35 million by some publications. Starring for a side which somehow finished 7th in Ligue 1 despite scoring the least goals for a non-relegated side, Atal played up and down the right flank for Patrick Vieira, who even deployed him as a winger at points. The 23-year-old bagged six in the league, a fifth of the club's total output of 30, with three coming in a single game. Add to that an average of 4.9 tackles and interceptions per 90, and it's no surprise he's been linked with Spurs and Chelsea. So far during the 1920 campaign, Atal has been playing in a more advanced role, Vieira clearly valuing his ability as an attacking threat. But unfortunately, he won't be able to showcase his talents in European competition this term. Another stellar season though, and we're sure the young gun will finally get a shot in the Champions League next year, with a big move a matter of when rather than if. Defender Aliseo Romagnoli A central figure in the AC Milan team for over four years now, Aliseo Romagnoli was handed the captain's armband following Leonardo Bonucci's departure from the San Siro in 2018. But despite helping the Rosaneri concede just 36 goals last season, the third best record in Serie A, and best tally managed by the club in six years, it wasn't enough to secure a first top four finish since 2013. This was made all the worse by the fact they missed out by a point to Atalanta and arch rivals Inter, and it means that at 24, Romagnoli has still not played in Europe's Premier Tournament. On top of that, Milan will not even contest the Europa League this season, having been banned from the competition for breaching financial fair play. With just domestic football to focus on, João Paolo will be hopeful he can steer the club back into the tournament in which they have such a prestigious history. And while Romagnoli is clearly no Nesta or Maldini, he is more than deserving of a dance on the biggest stage of all. Defender Francesco Acerbi Very much a Serie A stalwart, Francesco Acerbi made his debut in the Italian top flight after signing for Chievo in 2011, and came close to matching Javier Zanetti's record of 161 consecutive appearances in 2019, only to be cut off by a red card suspension at 149. Nevertheless, this year has been a successful one for the centre-back, who finally got his hands on some silverware after helping Lazio to copper Italia glory over Atalanta. He was also impressive in the league, winning nearly three aerial duels a game, stumping up 2.8 tackles and interceptions a match, and directly contributing to four goals from defence. But with a Bianco Celesti finishing the campaign 10 points off Champions League qualification in eighth, the former Sassuolo man will have to settle for playing Celtic and Wren this term. A Serbi's only UCL experience came all the way back in 2012-13, during his short stint with AC Milan. Now 31, the defender won't get many more shots at qualifying for Europe, a shame for a player whose good form has finally been recognised with a recall to the Italian national setup. Defender Alex Tellez Brazilian left-back Alex Tellez had a rather unorthodox entry into European football, moving to Galatasaray from Gremio in 2014, winning a Super League and two Turkish Cups in Istanbul. His impressive form eventually earned him a transfer to Porto in the Liga Nos, a more conventional arrival point for young Brazilian footballers. And in three years at the Estadio Dragao, he has gone from strength to strength. A marvellous crosser of the ball and a set-piece specialist, Tellez has put up at least eight league assists in every season he's played in Portugal, and over the past couple of years has added goals to his game too hitting six in all competitions in 2018-19. At the time of writing, he is contributing to a goal every two games. However, despite making the Liga Nosh team of the season for a second consecutive campaign and helping Porto to a Champions League quarter-final, Tellez makes the step down to the Europa League this term. This is after Sergio Conchao's side were edged out in the qualifiers by Russian outfit Krasnodar. Midfield, Wilfred Ndidi 
When Leicester signed Wilfred and Didi in January 2017, the Foxes were midway through an unlikely run to the Champions League quarterfinals. Then, just 20 years old, the Nigerian international played his part in the side's victory over Sevilla in the last 16, making four tackles and interceptions and winning five aerial duels in the decisive 2 0 second leg win at the King Power. However, his defensive know how wasn't enough to avoid a narrow loss to Atleti in the quarters, and Leicester haven't featured in any European competition since. This is despite them possessing better spending power than most clubs on the continent, with a smart recruitment policy to match. In fact, the East Midlands club have failed to finish above ninth since their famous Premier League title win of 2016 and are effectively competing with Wolves, Everton and West Ham for a single Europa League spot. With the top half of the Prem now so fiercely competitive, it seems unlikely that one of Europe's most promising defensive midfielders will get anywhere near the Champions League if he stays put. A big move to a UCL regular is surely somewhere on the horizon. Midfield, Paul Pogba OK, so we originally wanted to keep one player per club in our team, but we simply couldn't leave out Paul Pogba. A player who somehow still divides opinion amongst fans and pundits alike, Pogba is surely the best midfielder to not be playing Champions League football this campaign. The Frenchman's debut in European competition actually came in the Europa League back in 2012, when he came on for Michael Carrick in Man United's 2-1 loss to Bielsa's Athletic Bilbao. Since then, he has almost exclusively played in the UCL, even reaching the final with Juve in 2015, with a triumphant Europa League campaign under Mourinho two years later the only exception. Man United's key outfield player now more than ever, Paul Pogba contributed to 26 goals last season from central midfield for a faltering Red Devils side. That figure alone illustrates that Pogba is simply too big a player for Europe's secondary competition. And if United fail to qualify once again this season, he will almost certainly be on his way out. Midfield, Nabil Fakir Nabil Fakir's move to Real Batiste was undoubtedly one of the surprise transfers of the summer, not only for the fact that the Spanish club paid a cut price for the French attacking midfielder, but also because he effectively downgraded from captaining one of the top three teams in Liga to playing for a club which finished 10th in La Liga last season, and haven't qualified for the Champions League since 2005. It's a shame as Fakir was on far in the UCL in 1819, combining wonderfully with Memphis Depay and Tango and Dembele to dismantle Man City on the first match day and contributing to a goal every 102 minutes in a strong group which also contained Hoffenheim and Shakhtar Donetsk. And whilst he has had a bright start to life at the Benito Villa Marin, scoring 2-4 and four at the time of writing, Batiste have already lost twice, have conceded more than any other club and sit in 15th at the time of writing. Fakir may therefore have to wait a little while before getting onto Europe's biggest stage. Just before we go on to our next section guys, just a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a video. Forward, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang One of Europe's most consistently prolific strikers, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has hit 30-plus goals in all competitions for the past four consecutive seasons, and is 5-5 five and five so far this season at the time of writing. However, since his move to Arsenal in January 2018, the former Borussia Dortmund man hasn't played a minute of Champions League football, and considering his performances last season, he probably deserves a place in this year's edition more than most. The 30-year-old fired the Gunners to the Europa League final in 1819, even netting a hat-trick against Valencia in the semis and only Jovic and Giroud scored more than his eight goals in the competition. But after Unai Emery's side floundered against Chelsea and Baku, Arsenal fans will have to watch their team play outside of the UCL for a third consecutive season, the first time they've been in this predicament since 1997. And while Aubameyang continues to do the business in front of goal, when his team is conceding record numbers of shots at the other end of the field, Champions League qualification is largely out of his hands. Forward, Daniel Malen while there are more experienced centre forwards who could take this position, shout out Voot Veghorst and Shiro Immobile, for pure excitement we have to go for PSV's Daniel Malin. Having impressed in limited minutes during the 18-19 campaign where he scored 10 and assisted 4 in the Eredivisie despite making just 6 starts, the youngsters started this season in electric form. At the time of writing, the former Ajax and Arsenal youth players already scored 10, including 5 in one game against Vitesse and the winner against Germany in Euro qualifying a goal which handed the Netherlands a first competitive victory on their rival Sol since 1988. Super quick, skillful and intelligent on the ball, Malin is one of the most promising all-round attackers on the continent and the kind of talent the Champions League has been crying out for since Mbappe's explosion in 2017. While UCL audiences can enjoy watching Wonderkids, Jao Felix, Erling Braut Haaland and maybe even Ansu Fati strut their stuff, Daniel Malin has had to pay for getting knocked out in the second qualifying round. Forward, Felipe Anderson. During his time at Lazio, Felipe Anderson was one of the most effective and entertaining attackers in Serie A, so it was no surprise that he instantly became a central figure at the London Stadium after signing for West Ham in 2018. In fact, in his first season in East London, he racked up more minutes than in any of his campaigns in Rome, with the long-term injury to Andrei Yarmolenko placing even more responsibility on the Brazilian's shoulders. His nine Premier League goals was only topped by Anatovic and the Hammers squad, while his 40 appearances in all competitions even trumped goalkeeper Fabianski. 
showing just how important he is to Manuel Pellegrini. However, much like the aforementioned Wilfred and Didi, top half competition in the Prem means Anderson is part of a tight race for a Europa League spot. He is clearly enjoying his football with Mark Noble and the boys, and will no doubt stump up impressive numbers again this season. But having won the Copa Libertadores back in 2011 with Santos aged 18, alongside the likes of Neymar and Alexandro, Felipe Anderson may never have the chance to experience that level of glory again. So guys, that was our best players not playing in the Champions League this season. What did you guys think of the list? Did I miss any out? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.